everybody and welcome to the first day of Witchlands Week on my channel which is a week in the run up to the highly anticipated fourth book in the series of The Witchlands by Susan Dennard, Witch Shadow, which is coming out on Monday. I'm going to be doing Witchlands content every single day on my channel this week in anticipation and excitement for this book because I am just so excited for the, re the release of this book and I kind of just want to celebrate that with all of you. So The Witchlands is obviously one of my all-time favourite fantasy books. It's one of the few books where I'm, you know, counting the days until the next release of a book. I'll reread it so many times in between releases and stuff. Like, it's one that I just find myself coming back to time and time again. I absolutely adore this series. So, starting today, I'm going to be giving you a synopsis of what the series is about, as well as all the reasons why I think you should be, you should be reading it. So, what's it about? Well, it takes place in the Witchlands, which is sort of, you know, various different nations who have all been at war with each other for quite a long time, and it was just getting horrendous, the violence and the... It was just getting far too extreme. So they decided to put a pause on everything and try and attempt diplomacy by creating a 20-year truce that all the nations agreed to. 20 years of not fighting and not infringing on all these different rules that they kind of came up with for those 20 years. The story takes place in the 19th year of this truce and you follow two girls, Sophia and Isult, who are both witches. Because in this story there are normal people and there's also witches that are of varying different kinds. Sophia is a truth witch, which is a type of ether witch, and she has the ability to tell a truth from a lie. And Isult is a thread witch, which is another type of ether witch. She has the ability to see all the different threads that tie people together. So. Everyone in this world just, you know, thread witches can see threads, so it means they can see all their emotions in these threads, as well as their connections to other people. Which is how you then end up with terms like thread sisters and thread family, and which is the whole other idea of just, you know, found family, but actually physically being able to see it, which is just a really nice detail that I absolutely love. And obviously, Safi and Isult are thread sisters. And being a truth witch, obviously, you know, Safi can tell a truth from a lie, we're in the 19th year of the 20 year truce, if anyone were to find out that Safi has the ability, has this ability, these nations would all do just about anything to get a hold of her. So when she and Azult accidentally run into something called someone called a blood witch who has the ability to smell dif different people's blood as well as the witchery in their blood and he finds out that Safi is a truth witch, he is hired to go after her and now they're on the run. And that's basically the story of the first book. Yeah. So that's the plot varying about, you know, it's lots of political manoeuvring and it just gets more and more in depth with the politics and the characters and the lore and the world building as well. The more books you go into it, you know, Safi and his old friendship is so pure and fantastic and you definitely, you aren't just told that, they're, that they are close friends and close enough to be considered thread sisters. They, you're showing this and I think that's done really really well and I think the emphasis on this friendship is just one of my all-time favourite things about this book. Which brings me to the magic system of this series. You know, I love it. I absolutely love it. First of all because it's not just the stereotypical earth, fire, water, air witcheries you can get. You also have ether and void witches, which is an interesting concept, you know, ether being the sort of the spirit, the soul, and obviously void being, you know, just nothingness, void. And I love that, you know, you're not just, you know, you're probably thinking, immediately thinking Avatar Last Bender, and like, yeah, fair enough. But you're not just a fire witch, you're not just an earth witch. There's like subcategories within that. So there's some people that are full-blown air witches, but then there's some people who are just wind witches. So wind witches are able to control air currents sort of around them, whereas a full-blown air witch, full-blown air witches are you know, they're, um, they're associated with the sky and the wind, and I think that gives them more control over the weather and things as well. So, like, that kind of maybe explains the difference between a full air witch and a wind witch. And it's similar with the other things, you know, you'll have earth witches and you'll have plant witches, you'll have water witch, but then also just a tide witch, you know. It's a really interesting idea, and I like that there's not more than one type within a category. And then also when it comes to the ether witches and the void witches, ether witches are stuff like a truth witch, already mentioned, voice switch which allows two voice switches to basically talk through one another so if you wanted to speak it's basically like doing facetime do through a person so if you've got a voice switch and the person you want to talk to has got a voice switch they can connect and you can talk and it will reach the other person through that voice switch which you know interesting concepts it allows for communication across different nations and word witches if 
you involve a word witch in a contract or something like that, you cannot break that. There's magic in that sort of writing that means if you go back on your deal, your name will disappear and the other person will know that you've lied to them. Which is how the 20, 20 year truce was able to last because all the nations signed a, vo a word witch document. So if any one of them were to break their, the rules that they sort of got in place with each other, their name would vanish and the, tr the war would start up again. Which I thought was a really nice little detail, sort of, you know, you've got this idea of this 20 year truce, but how do you, in, you know, make sure that everyone's going to follow it and it's done through vo it's done through word witches and I just think that's a really cool idea. And my absolute favourite thing, like this isn't really explored as much in the books, this is something I found on the wikia, but I'm hoping that we'll actually hear a little bit more about it I think in the next couple of books. You can have healers of all types of witch, but each one has their own sort of thing that they can kind of heal. So water witch heal healers deal with the fluids in the body and stuff. Ether witch healers can deal with emotional health and mental health. Air witch healers deal with the lungs and the pulmonary stuff. Earth witch healers deal with the skin and the bones of the body. And I just love that little detail of not just having, oh, this one element I have the healers. Like, no, everyone's kind of got different types of healers that are correspondent to the elements that they are to do with and things. And I just think that's such a really interesting idea and it's definitely something that kind of has come up that I really want to see explored further. And Void Witches as well, it's another sort of thing. A lot of them are sort of considered to be myths, but then you do actually meet Void Witches. The Blood Witch mentioned earlier that goes after Safi, his name is Edwin and he's one of the main characters. He's a Blood Witch who can smell somebody's blood. You then get introduced to this idea of Curse Witches, who are witches to drain other people's powers, as well as weaver witches which is like almost like the opposite of a thread witch and they're able to control people's threads as well as cut them and snap them and I just think that's such a just it's so creative and I absolutely love it and the way it's sort of woven into the world all the witches have to be have to be marked on the back of their hand with a witch mark and anyone who's not marked is deemed a heretic witch and can go to prison for that. So that's another sort of element is that Safi and Azult are unmarked witches so they kind of have to keep that hidden and it's just so... Oh, I just love this series. It's just so clever and everything makes sense and it all like works well together and oh, I just absolutely love it. Another reason why I think you should read this book is the amazing character development because while some of the, like, I love the world building, a lot of people say that it's a bit clunky, because you do kind of get just kind of chucked into it, and you'll learn kind of more the, the more books you read. But I don't mind that, it means I can go back, I can reread things, I can make sense of it. But, you know, if you maybe don't like that, then I will give you the heads up, it does kind of throw you into the mix of things. But the character work is phenomenal. Because not only do you have these two fantastically different female protagonists who have this amazing friendship that is so explored and deep and so important to the story. I don't even know how to describe how good it is. Every single character you meet has depth, which is just incredible to see because so many th you know characters, especially side characters, they'll maybe have one or two little sort of traits or something, but they won't have nearly as much depth as the characters in the Witchlands. The main characters are Safi and Azult, but you also have sort of two secondary main characters, which is Merrick, who is a prince of this place called Nubrevna, and he is a wind witch, and Edwin, who is the blood witch. And so, so far those are the four books that they follow these four characters. And obviously these characters have got huge character development, you know, they're, they're who the story's about, really. And I think one of my favourite things about this thing is that the character development doesn't just happen in one book, it happens over the course of the series. Safi's character arc is definitely about sort of learning what she is able to do and with her witchery, you know, there's this, there's this quote that says you could bend and shape the world if, Sophia, if only you knew how. That's often a sort of quote that kind of she comes back to and that's definitely her character arc is learning just what she can do if she puts her finger out and actually thinks about what she could do for the good of other people instead of just what she would do for herself and result. And expanding her horizons and she, she learns this in Truth Witch, she learns it again in Wind Witch and she continues to learn it in Blood Witch. It's really just, I love that. Same with Merrick, he's definitely the sort of epitome of toxic masculinity in the sort of first couple of books. He doesn't pay attention to other people, he sort of jumps to conclusions. His journey is definitely about unlearning all of that and learning to listen and pay attention 
and he learns this in Wind Witch and he further learns it in Blood Witch. I just, I cannot, I cannot stress how much I love the way these characters change and develop and it's not just a one book thing and then, oh they're fixed now, they, you know, they, they take time to learn it and relearn it and learn it in depth. And the side characters as well. They all have their own motivations and this is definitely explored and shown. They all have, you know, the, the characters that meet them almost sort of put them down as one thing or the other and use the reader and them as the characters learn, but there's so much more to them that you ever thought you could have could have been, you know. Merrick's sister, Vivia, who you meet in the second book, there's so much more to her character than what her brother and her family ever thought of her. There's so much more to even Leopold, which is a friend of Car Safi's that you meet in the first book. You know, his motivations and the sort of Oh, he's, he's a fascinating character. I am so excited to see more of him in the next book because I have got no idea what his deal is, but I love it. Like, all these characters have got so much more to them, so much depth, and it's just not something I see in a lot of books that have these huge casts of characters. You know, especially when they're not the sort of core characters. They tend, you know, this, the amount of depth that they have is just amazing to me. If you don't like a character originally, I can guarantee you that's intentional because they're going to go through this incredible change to become perhaps not perfect but still likeable or understandable and it's just, I, I, oh, I love it, I love it so much. Susan Denner just, she clearly takes her time with books, you know. I think there was about perhaps a year, year and a half between Truth Witch and Wind Witch, there was two years between Wind Witch and Blood Witch and another two and a half years between Blood Witch and which Shadow, part of that was due to medical reasons on the author's side, as well as it was actually due to get released in February of this year, but she pushed it back due to something flagged up by a sensitivity reader. And I just appreciate the time that she takes. You know, she's not just going to go, oh, this is my release date, I'll stick to that. She will take the time to write these books, to make sure everything makes sense, to make sure everything that the characters are doing and saying works. And you can just tell that so much care and time and effort have gone into these stories. You know, from the development and the foreshadowing to the character work. I will say Wind Witch, the second book in the series, is perhaps slow. I think a lot of people do pick up on the fact that, um, one of my favourite booktubers, Thoughts on Tomes, she pointed out that, you know, the characters are almost physically in the same place that they are at the same, at the start of the story. But they do change so much as characters that even though it is plot-wise quite slow, the stuff that happens is so important and so gripping in my opinion. Like I, I barely even noticed that they were hardly doing anything because the changes they're going through as characters and the time that has been taken to explore these character points is just so fantastic to the story and then and then it, ma it means when you get to something like Blood Witch, Blood Witch is easily my favourite in the series so far, you know, you've, they've gone through these characters journeys so when the pace picks back up again and they're, but the character stuff's still going. There's just so much stuff that gets done in the sort of three books that you have. There is also the novel, novella Sight Witch, which comes between Wind Witch and Blood Witch and acts as a prequel following a character that you meet in the first book. And seeing her point of view, again, she's got so much depth to her character that you could barely even guess would be there. And you learn about this other sect of witch called Sight Witches who almost learn it and aren't born with this power and I think that's a really interesting idea to bring in that you know you can have witches who aren't born with their magic and the world building and the lore in that novella is amazing like if you love world building you will love the novella because it it really dives deep into what there's so much more to this world than you could possibly imagine it is set before the events of truth witch so if you would if you aren't sure if you want to start this series, you could read the novella, because it's not very big, you know, that's it, but I personally would recommend reading Truth Witch and Wind Witch first so that you get an idea of the world, and then read Sight Witch before then continuing on to Blood Witch, because then the stuff covered in here is very relevant in Blood Witch. It's just, I love this book series, I absolutely love it, and you should all read it. I don't think I've made any sense in this video whatsoever, but I don't care because I love this book series. Oh, it's just fantastic. It's just so... I, yeah, I'm going to stop now because I think I'm going to start to annoy myself because I'm repeating myself now, but it's amazing. You all need to read it. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments and I will answer them. If you have any questions about what these book series are about that I haven't perhaps covered, if you have read the book series, gush with me in the comments because it's amazing. And 
yeah, as I said, I will be doing different videos every single day. Um, stay tuned for that, they'll be coming at 3 o'clock in the afternoon UK time, right up until the release of Witch Shadow, which comes out on Monday, and I'll have links to buy all these different books as well as pre-order Witch Shadow in my description, so go have, have a look at that if you are interested in checking out these books. But thank you very much for watching, I will see you tomorrow. Oh, 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 oh,